Now let us come to this expression. So as I said, so one is that G R and S of Q, they are Fourier transform of each other. So then that tells us that we need to go to larger Q values if I do a direct Fourier transform and we want to see small r structure. Smaller r demands larger Q. And uh, in case of liquid and amorphous systems, typically we can think of going to 15 to 20 angstrom inverse. Now, more importantly, if I need smaller lambda or high energy, high energy neutrons, then let me mention to you that I discussed with you something called a hot source. A hot source, what it does is this number of neutrons versus energy, sorry, number of neutrons versus energy, if there is a Maxwellian at room temperature and 25 to 30 milli electron volts peak, then smaller energy neutrons are less in number, higher energy neutrons are also less in number. So for this part, I discussed with you that we use what is known as whole neutron sources to enhance the number in the low energy range, low energy range to give gains so that we can use low energy neutrons and I will talk you, talk, uh, discuss with you uh, the usage of whole neutrons in experimental facilities. Similarly, for uh, Higher energy neutrons, we can think of increasing the, the shifting the spectrum to the higher energy side by using something called a hot neutron source. So, higher energy of neutrons. smaller lambda. But uh, at the moment, there are not too many hot neutron sources available. In uh, ISIS Grenoble, there is there's a hot neutron source where a graphite at around 15 to 1600 degrees centigrade is maintained inside the reactor core and uh, that shifts the, the basically neutrons enter the thermal neutrons from these regions, they enter the hot source, neutrons from this region and get the spectrum gets shifted and our liquid and amorphous instrument should be using neutrons of such energies. So hot neutron sources are preferable for liquid and amorphous diffractor. This is one difference in experimental facility which studies liquid and amorphous material. In case of spallation neutron sources, interestingly, we get a lot more number of hot neutrons inherently because in case of spallation neutron sources, once the proton beam hits a target, hits a target, it generates neutrons with very high energy. Actually, it can go up to 100 mega electron volt. And these are actually, these are brought down to thermal energies, low energies using moderators surrounding the target material. But if we use less moderated neutrons, then inherently hot. So in case of a spallation neutron source, we have inherently we have access to more number of hot neutrons and liquid and amorphous experiments can be desirably done better in a spallation neutron source. So that's what I wrote here. Experiments at hot source in a reactor or hot neutrons in a spallation neutron source as a preferable choice. So with that, I will come to the experimental setup what we have in Dhruva. Uh, in Dhruva, we have this looks very similar to the instrument that we use for powder and uh, the powder materials for crystallography. This is the detector bank surrounding the sample here. 
third in the sample in this part. But we have five detectors here, five position sensitive detectors, and the largest angle we use is around 148 degrees. We can also go to smaller lambda, one step process, but our monochromator, we can set it for smaller lambda. So at the same angles, we can go to higher Q. 148 is the largest angle, but the available Q value is approximately 15 angstrom inverse. So 15 angstrom inverse, I must compare this with respect to the Sandal spectrometer, Sandal's at uh, ICS, ICS Palation Neutron Source. Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, UK. Here, the sandals, the, the angle you in this is not large, the largest angle is that bank of detector is at 38 degrees. But because we have access to very small wavelength neutrons, even up to 0.1 angstrom, it is possible to go up to 50 angstrom inverse in Q. I must mention here one thing. When I say Q, actually what I want to say, and this is normally always put in Q, in H cross Q, is the momentum transfer. Because I am measuring my intensity in momentum space in, through my scattering curve. But always we talk about Q as if this is the momentum transfer, which is slightly I should say misunderstood or misquoting because the momentum transfer is H cross Q, but all the experiments we will be discussing about Q. So far, I have talked to you about Q, and later also I will be talking to you about Q when I talk about diffraction experiment. So we can go up to 50 angstrom inverse in Q in sandals, and I will try to give some results from there also. So now coming back to the experiments that is done at uh, that has been done in Druva. I'll just go ahead. So before I start again, in case of crystalline material, Q is equal to G as I mentioned you, and this expression gives me the structure factor Bj at the power minus i twice pi i xj h. This is from the crystallography. But in case of liquid and amorphous material, the structure factor can be written like this. It is starting from the same source, but uh, this gets modified to this. I will avoid the derivation here, but this, in this expression you can see, this is the structure factor and this takes care of the incoherent part. But B in a two component system is a concentration of the ith uh, Average of B coherent is given by the concentration, weighted concentration of the coherent scattering length. The SQ is the total structure factor, and we also discuss about partial structure factor. For example, if I talk about, let us say, we shall be discussing uh, S of Q for say vitreous silica or silica or germanium selenium glasses we will be discussing this so in these cases actually we have got distances several distances so partial structure factor means there can be silicon silicon distance in case of silicon oxygen silicon oxygen distance and oxygen oxygen distance all of these will give us the partial structure factor and the sum of them will give us the total structure factor that we measure in an experiment and these can be simulated 
and test it against the experimental result. Similarly, in case of germanium selenium glasses, I will have germanium, germanium distance, and also germanium selenium distance. So we can use both of and both of these comprise the partial structure factor and the sum of them is the total structure factor. So, and often we write about particle distribution, particle distribution in a radial particle distribution which is nr. If I get from s of q to g of r then the particle distribution nr equal to 4 pi r square rho gr nr gives me the probability of particle number between r and r plus dr. So nr dr will give us the particle number of particles between r and r plus dr 4 by r square rho gr. Rho is the average particle density. So this gives the particles with within r and r plus dr. So let me just show you a result and how we did the data analysis. In this case the data analysis was by us using a model known as Monte Carlo G of R. I will briefly tell you what it is. So the solid lines are the data of germanium selenium glass GX selenium 1 minus 6 and you can see various valuable weights that were used and uh, the solid line is the data discrete points are the, I'm sorry, the solid lines are the fit, the discrete points are the data and there is excellent fit uh, between the data and the solid. What we did actually in this case, we started, we did not do direct Fourier transform because you can see that our results stop approximately 40 angstrom inverse. So direct Fourier transform is certainly not a good idea. But we, what we did actually, what uh, we assume a G of R which is a Farkas Yevik hard sphere. What it is I will just briefly explain to you. In case of Farkas Yevik hard sphere We locate hard spheres in a certain volume, a number of hard spheres. In this case, there will be selenium and germanium atom sizes, and then we pack them the, in a certain volume. But there, if the if in this case hard sphere, if the hard spheres intercept, then the interatomic interatomic potential is infinity because two hard spheres cannot penetrate each other forbidden and if they don't penetrate then v r of r is zero so v of r is infinity r less than equal to r zero size of an atom so with this assumption this parkas yevik hard sphere we create a linear one dimensional g of r by using the Parkas and Yevik hard sphere model for our sample. So this G of R is our input to start with for a given configuration. For a given configuration, I we generate the configuration using an interatomic potential which is meant for this hard sphere. That means we just put the hard spheres. If they intercept each other, we deal. We immediately say this configuration is not possible. Put it somewhere else and at some point. We just after creating for some time, we let it equilibrate and then we find out G of R, one dimensional G of R. Now, once we have created the G of R, we can always do a Monte Carlo result, we Fourier invert and we have a Monte Carlo result for the structure factor in Q. And we also have the experimental results. So now what we do, do actually we try to minimize the difference between the experimental result 
and the Monte Carlo S of Q. So I have got an S of Q. So one S of Q is experimental, experimental. Then another S of Q is model, Monte Carlo model, which has come from G of R, which has come from G of R that we started with. And then we have model. And we have to minimize the difference between these two. And that's what we did in this experiment, in the, with this data. So this is, and sigma i square is the error bar, which is square root of n at every point. So now, every time we change the g of r, the s of i Monte Carlo, it changes. And then there is a change associated with chi square, which we call it delta chi square. And this, we accept the chain with the probability e to the power minus delta chi square by t. I will uh, explain to you a little bit of detail because this Monte Carlo technique has been heavily used uh, in Ising model. It is very similar, but uh, I would like to tell you how it is done with the, taking the help of Ising model. So in case of Ising model, spin half, I just consider spin half particle. So I, I take a lattice. This is an Ising model. Ising model lattice. So here, I can flip an atom, uh, sorry, a spin at a side. When I flip it, then we know that the interaction energy is Jij is i dot s j in this case let us assume nearest neighbor so then for an for one atom it is only one two three and four these four atoms are concerned these four atoms are concerned as nearest neighbor if i flip this there is an increase in energy delta e from this expression increase of energy delta e so in one state I randomly flip one spin. This is same as what I am doing for the liquid and amorphous system. I randomly shift one sphere. Now when I randomly move as give a spin, there is an energy difference of delta E. This I will be comparing with delta chi square, a virtual energy. Now delta E, if there is a change in energy of delta E, we act, if delta e is less than zero, then we accept them because that is reducing the energy. If it is increasing the energy, do I reject it? No. I accept it with a probability to the power minus delta E by T. This is a Boltzmann factor. That is what a Monte Carlo simulation, Monte Carlo simulation of Ising model does. So that means it accepts even if the energy is increased with a probability e to the power minus delta e by kt. How does it do? Now you can evaluate the value. We know that if delta e goes to infinity, this becomes zero. If this, that means we cannot turn. But this is a finite number here it will be. Because I don't know whether the nearest neighbor was already flipped or not. So if all of them are flipped, then there will be 4 into some basic unit. If two of them are already flipped, it will be 2e. So what we do actually, in the computers today, there are facilities to generate random numbers. Random numbers between 0 and 1. Now this one, if I scale it to 0 and 1, then after I have got this change in energy, if it is less than energy, I accept the move. It is greater than energy, it is the power minus delta by t probability. So I choose a random number and compare this with the random number. If this is, if the random number is greater than equal to the minus delta by kt, that means it allows me the move, I move, that means it flip. In this case, there is no internal energy involved, but a structure is involved. And the chi-square with that involved. Now I compare the delta chi-square with the energy change in case of spin glass that I showed you here, delta e. 
when I do that, then I move the probability, the move, I accept the move with the probability of e to the power minus delta chi square by t. Now, this is a, this is just an increase in a parameter space and error bar, so there are no units. So, t is a fictitious temperature, but I can fit a fictitious temperature. What will happen actually, if I use a very large t, you can see this e to the power minus delta chi square by t, it will be a e to the power minus a very small number, so that means it will be almost equal to zero, so all the moves will be accepted with high probability. Reason being, when you have a high temperature for a medium, then the dynamics takes over and the energy increase is accepted because there is lots of energy in the medium to randomize the material. And when if t equal to 0, then no moves will be accepted because this will be 0. And my random number space is 0 to 1. So this you can see that if t is large, this goes to almost 1 and almost all the moves are taken. So even I can start with a large t and keep coming down with simulation. There are various techniques which I don't want to discuss here. But this is how we generate the model, change the model Monte Carlo S of Q, compare it with this experimental and finally accept the S of Q which gives you minimum error. And this is what is shown here. And this is experimentally obtained S of Q and the model and the, from that model we can get uh, various parameters of uh, liquid and amorphous systems in case of germanium selenium glass. Uh, this is T of R, this is pair distribution function and uh, this was uh, a work we published in journal from this one, sorry, the data and the figures are taken from this journal. Now, the most used technique for liquid and amorphous systems is a reverse Monte Carlo by R. L. McGreevy. So, we had used a one dimensional G of R to simulate our S of Q in case of germanium selenium glass. But the reverse Monte Carlo takes a three dimensional element of atoms and molecules. So, this is much closer to reality. But in a normal Monte Carlo, like as I showed you in uh, this uh, Ising model, one tries to minimize the energy of the whole, uh, whole free energy because it can flip, higher energy configurations can also be accepted. But generally, we are trying to find out the minimum, not in energy space, but free energy space. But in that case, if you see here, in normal Monte Carlo, we need to define an interaction energy. So here also, when you are talking about the arrangement of atoms and molecules, I need to talk about internal energy if I want to do a simulation, physical simulation. But I would say this is a mathematical simulation, not physical. But what we do actually, exactly what I talked just now, that I play with the arrangement of the atoms in three dimension and create the structure factor Monte Carlo, compare it with structure factor experimental and try to minimize that. I will just try to show you the result for vitreous silicon. This was a paper by McGreevy. So, <coughs> you see this is the neutron, the structure factor simulated as well as experimental. And this is the atomic arrangement. This, actually, this is for SiO4. SiO4 forms a tetrahedra. <laughs> we talk about SiO4 units. So it's a tetrahedra. So, if I draw a tetrahedra, no, this is not the color. <laughs> this 
this is better. So this is the tetrahedra, tetrahedra that we are talking about. Tetrahedra. Now we can play with the orientation of this tetrahedra giving length of the bonds and then try to generate the experimental values. So this or the arrangement, so it says the projections of atomic positions in a seven angstrom thick section from a representative configuration. Large atoms are silicon, small atoms are oxygen. Silicon oxygen bonds from all atoms within the section drawn. So the sum bonds terminate on atoms outside of the section, which are not drawn. It's okay. So basically, it's a he played with the silicon oxygen tetrahedra, which is a basic unit for vitreous silicon. And most interestingly, this is a corner shearing tetrahedra. So that means if I consider another tetrahedra, these corners, so with respect to one tetrahedra, the other tetrahedra can share corner with it and they can orient with respect to one another. They can, some bonds even get elongated, but they can orient. So the tetrahedra remains because these bonds are strong. So the silicon oxygen tetrahedra remains more or less undisturbed, but their orientation change when they are corner shearing tetrahedra, not edge shearing, but these corners they are shared. And these were the finding of this work by McGreevy and using reverse Monte Carlo. So at the moment, full RMC package is available online. It's, uh, anybody can use it and it's available. If you are interested to do uh, neutron or X-ray studies of liquid and amorphous material, uh, this is the best possible package which you can use to do the Monte Carlo simulation, reverse Monte Carlo simulation and get a good fit to the experimental result. I talked about, to about molecular clusters. This is a work done in, a, in Dhruva in our group. Uh, I will, the reference I missed here, this is actually done by PSR Krishna and group. I will show you the reference in the next lecture. Here actually, uh, total structure factor which has been measured, it's a sum of two parts. One is that there are molecules, propanol molecules, age bonded simple alcohols. So one is the distinct, that means this is the structure, this is the correlation between two molecules and this is the structure inside the intramolecular structure and intermolecular structure. And here, through the simulation, our sim uh, reverse Monte Carlo simulation, one finds that there are clusters of molecules here. So that means in a liquid, we assume that the molecules are able to move freely. Actually, there are clusters, but I must mention, these clusters must be having some time scale. So these clusters are forming and breaking and again forming and breaking. But the thing is that at any instant of time, these clusters, they exist in this alcohol and that is the finding of this work on liquid and amorphous material. Uh, as I told you that up to 50 angstrom inverse is possible at Sandals. I just attempt to show one result from Sandals. This is a nature paper. I will again uh, show you the reference. I missed it. My apologies for that. I will bring out the reference in the next lecture. So, most interesting finding in this, because it is nature, you see in this solution of magnesium perchlorate, they observe from the partial structure factors that uh, there is a drastic defect on water structure, there is a high pressure. They get a water structure which is commensurate with a higher pressure on oxygen. Because we know that oxygen has got a structure like this. So every H2 in the solute, uh, in, the, uh, the sol in the solution has this structure. So, and there is also hydrogen bonding between two hydrogens. 
So there is a signature that the oxygen, that the water is under higher pressure in this solution. So this is a result from the uh, sandals and you can see that the data are taken up to very high, uh, high Q values, up to 20 ms per minute. So with this, I will like to stop today on the liquid and amorphous systems. A brief uh, introduction to single crystal will be done in the next part.